Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. I'm very excited to show you my new DIY 18650 lithium DC power box slash generator. Looking to show you all the features. Before we do that, if you could take a minute to subscribe and hit that notification button, that would be most appreciated. I'm really happy how the box turned out. It's laid out really well. and It's going to be perfect for charging small devices. An always on voltmeter provides quick reference for voltage for the system. The first switch powers on the 24 volt relay, which turns on power for the entire system. A relay allows a lower voltage switch to control a higher voltage device, in this case, power from the 24 volt battery. The second switch controls a 25 millimeter fan, which helps exhaust any heat and hot air from the enclosure. I'm quite impressed in how much air this little fan can actually move. There's an SAE plug installed in the back, but I'll talk more about that later. The third switch controls four LED marker trailer lights, two on the front and one on each side. These are super bright lights that will be very useful at night. Credit to fellow YouTuber Chris DIYer for the heads up on these lights. Check out his channel in the links below. The fourth switch activates the accessories on top of the case. A QC 3.0 dual USB port and a standard 12 volt outlet receptacle offer plenty of output and power to charge devices. A switched USB port on the side of the case offers additional device charging independently at 2.1 amps each. Overall, I'm pleased with the number of accessories and outlets offered in the system, especially considering the overall size of 6 and 3 quarters by 3 and a third by 5 and a half inches. Charging for the system is through the SAE side port on the back of the box from an acceptable DC power source. Here I'm using a 12 volt 36 watt power supply with an SAE 5x5 x 2x5 millimeter adapter. DC power is routed to a Droke boost buck converter, which acts as a voltage power regulator. At the bottom of the boost buck converter reviews the input voltage of the DC source. The top of the display shows the set charging voltage and amperage. The larger number just below is the voltage of the battery. I'm going to lower the amperage to 1 amp since the wall power supply can only handle up to 36 watts. I can use a larger power supply up to 5 amps to charge with this boost buck converter. 1 amp of power will be around 28 watts which is a comfortable setting for this wall power supply. Now I really like this boost buck converter because it offers several other protective features such as over and under voltage as well as current and power protection. There is also a preference for the startup allowing for instant charging once the unit is plugged into a power source. Turning the unit on delivers instant power immediately, unlike a traditional charge controller which ramps up power. Taking a look at the meter on the left front of the power box reviews a shunt system that offers similar protective features found in the boost buck voltage regulator. Now I still have to figure out a few things here but I'm currently using the over and under voltage protective features. I have also set the battery amp hours to 17.5. That is the true rating of this 7F7P battery but I'll probably have to back that down since I'm not charging the battery to full capacity. Amp hours and battery state of charge as stated on the display do decrease with power usage. I do find it curious that after charging the battery, I have to manually reset the meter and amp hours. Now I do find these meters to fall short often on ease of use and accuracy, but in the end I think you actually get a lot for the little amount of money you're paying for these types of devices. The meter to the front right of the power box is actually a battery color meter. It's not required to have, I'm actually using it between the buck converter and the 12 volt side to help measure and compare efficiencies and losses in the 12 volt buck converter. To get full use out of this meter, I would really need to connect it to a 24 volt battery. If I was doing this build again, I probably would not install it. My advice to users, if you want a meter with smart features such as voltage protection, go with the shunt style on the left. If you want a meter that is much more accurate in both charging and discharging, Go with a color meter style on the right. The first look at the inside of the power box reveals a very snug fit for all the wires and devices. Major components such as the battery pack, buck converter, relay, power supply, as well as 12 and 24 volt bus bars fit in the bottom and sides of the case. The top of the case contains wiring for the switches and outlets. I did directly solder the USB and 12 volt receptacles in order to add clearance to close the case. The data cables for the boost buck converter were also extended in order to reach the back of the supply board. 
I designed and printed a cage to help protect the buck converter from touching other wires and components in the case. I do like how the 24 volt relay fits perfectly in between the 12 volt bus bars. The power supply board for the boost buck regulator fits nicely underneath the SAE port and brushless fan. The 7S7P battery contains 49 2.5 amp hour 18650 cells for 453 watt hours at nominal voltage. An installed BMS allows for up to 20 amp discharge and 8 amp charging rates. Additional information on wearing this BMS can be found in the link in the description below. Here are a couple shots of the new power box in size comparison to my previous 18650 build, which is both an AC and DC unit. Even though the new box is DC only, I really like the smaller, more portable size, whereas the new build uses a larger 7S7P battery for roughly 46% more power. The new power box weighs just under 10 pounds, making it very easy to carry and transport. Setting up to do my first charge with two iPhones and two iPads along with a Mavic 2 drone battery. Total power consumption here used was between 130 and 140 watts or just under 5 amps of power. Everything worked as expected. The largest consumption came from the Mavic 2 battery, which takes around 90 watts to charge. I have a 10 amp fuse on the 12 volt accessory for close to 140 watts of available power. Larger fuses can be used and the total max power of the buck converter is 300 watts. One of my concerns in building such a tight box is temperature and heat dissipation. The relay, buck converter, and battery will give off the most heat. The 300 watt max buck converter gets substantially hotter as power is drawn. The hottest temperature reading was around 130 degrees Fahrenheit with a power draw of around 140 watts. The cage around the buck converter can withstand heat up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius. The cage can always be reprinted with thermal conducting material if needed to withstand higher heat. I was very pleased that nothing overheated and temperatures were well within the expectations for staying relatively cool. All right, guys, headed outside now. It's a fairly overcast day. Got a little sun coming out, but it's certainly not blue skies. Pretty cold here in northern Vermont, USA. About 8 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 13 Celsius. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sky here. Show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and see what we can pull for power from our 100 watt 12 volt solar panel. So here's our 12 volt solar panel. It's a flexible type. I'm going into the box here. Let's go ahead and take a look here what we're pulling for power. I've gone ahead and set it to 1.4 amps and we're getting 38.7 watts. I tried 1.5 amps and it wasn't enough power. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So I've gone ahead and bumped up the amps to 2.2, just over 61 watts. The sun has improved, conditions are better. It's late in the afternoon, about three o'clock, mid-January. So this is actually pretty good sun right now, considering it's the end of the day. So 61 watts out of that 12 volt panel. All right, guys, I want to finish up the video here. I had lots of fun building this project and showing it to you, uh, especially taking it outside here and using it under solar. I think that's pretty cool, uh, pretty versatile for this type of box here. Any DC power input should be uh, sufficient for charging this box up. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, hit that notification button if you want to see more videos like that. When you subscribe, um, you give me a like. That's a big uh, sign of support for my channel and what I'm trying to do here. So again, thank you very much for checking this out here and uh, hope you guys have a great day. And if you try doing this, do it at your own risk, get help. Um, there's lots of people. There's a couple of great forums, DIY Power Walls. That's an excellent forum on Facebook that uh, I've gone to to get help and to see what other people have done. So check them out and uh, you guys have a great day.